Uh, just ahead of morning tea, we have a short address from the China Chamber of Commerce in New Zealand, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, which we've heard about earlier today. Uh, originally, uh, we were going to have the chair of the Chamber of Commerce, Xi Jung, to deliver this message, but he's been unable to join us here today and has asked his deputy at China Construction Bank, uh, Wang Yunfeng, to step in. Yun Fong has a long history with the bank, uh, including stints as head of treasury uh, and general manager in Australia. Uh, as he makes his way up, we have a short video from the Chinese Chamber of Commerce to play. Business in New Zealand for the China Chamber of Commerce here in New Zealand. Uh, I reckon forward. I agree. Thank you, sir. Let's get ready for the wonderful performance, Dream of China, to watch the flourishing age. Enjoy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, unlike other guests, by opening, by acknowledging the, uh, the, string, the distinguished guests, I like, I like my opening um, by addressing some apologies. First of all, being the last stand man between you guys and the long anticipated morning tea. Second of all, um, uh, Mr. Chi does send his apology. Um, the, the other day when he finished up his speech, he asked me to look at it and um, see how I, th um, how I thought about it. I said, it was great, now, mister, you can go out and break late. And this is how I, um, how I got myself um, uh, filling his shoes by delivering speech on his behalf. Um, I hope the video gives you a better understanding how uh, who we are and what we do. Uh, boots on the ground from our home in Aotearoa, linking New Zealand and China. Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Katoa. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The China Chamber of Commerce has always been an active member supporting uh, China Business Summit. Due to certain personal health reasons, the chairman himself, Mr. Chi, couldn't make it today, and I'm here to deliver his speech on his behalf. Uh, we are honored to speak uh, this year as we celebrate major milestones, the, 50, uh, the 50th anniversary of China-New Zealand relations and the 20th anniversary since the China Chamber of Commerce was first established in New Zealand. The ambassador himself chronicled the 50 years of our China-New Zealand relation, a bound that has been strengthened and supported by our chamber for the past two decades. It was founded in 2002 on humble beginnings with just eight visionary members 
that wanted to leverage and knowledge um, the network as an enduring legacy to enrich lives in their adopted home. Now our vision has evolved to become a commitment to support our members' efforts to foster the bilateral understanding and economic cooperation between New Zealand and China. While the two-way trade between China and New Zealand has grown roughly 20 folds during the past two decades, our membership has also blossomed with the same rate to over 160 plus passionate members. Um, even the pandemic couldn't damn the enthusiasm to join. Just to name a few fresh starters, Desperate, Macy University, Silver from Farms, Alibaba, and Lincoln University. The China Chamber of Commerce has become a dynamic organization for information and networking that includes some of the China and New Zealand largest companies actively involved in the community. We focus on trade since with some of our members witnessing the signing of the historical free trade agreement in Beijing. We place high value face-to-face -face visit um, prior to the pandemic and we look forward to extensively facilitating this again, again in the future. The most uh, recent China trade mission was a remarkable success collaborating with stakeholders three years ago, opening doors to the Western Forum, attracting over 100 more delegates traveling to Chengdu and Xi'an. We also encourage our members to get involved with social and environmental problems. Social, corporate social responsibility is not just an investment in the future, but a chance to get employees engaged by fundraising and volunteering. The Chamber has donated hundreds of thousand dollars to charities and the individual members have pursued various civil projects that align with their own sector. Our Chamber hosted numerous hybrid events over the past two years to remain engaged with companies and we are able to host in-person roadshow that attract over 400 exporters in Auckland, Christchurch, and Nielsen Tasman region. We look forward to working with NZTE to showcase New, Ze New Zealand products and services in the New Zealand Pavilion at the fifth China International Import Expo to be held in Shanghai this November. Even with closed border last year, Kiwi exhibitors signed contracts over 100.7 billion US dollars, which is a 55% increase over the previous year. The new accelerator program should offer even more benefits, a subsidy for exemption fees, additional consumer exposure, utilizing Chinese mainstream media, and reduced shipping cost, just to name a few. In each city roadshow visited, companies told me that Expo is a platform primarily designed for opportunities to launch new products and services and to celebrate key partnerships as New Zealand reconnects with the world. The New Zealand ambassador to China, Claire Fernley, has attended every Expo and sent a video message to broadcast in each city during our roadshow. Participants heard from the experts Fonterra, Zaspery, Convita, Silver Firm Farms, Wimpix, Westland Milk, Nakatitahu, um, Sea Lord, Kono, and Pix Peanut Butter, sharing their experiences and strategies on how to maximize opportunities in China market. We are aware of this economic growth of a two-way trade valued over New Zealand dollar 35.5 billion last year. That comes with a cost when New Zealand aspires to become neutral, become a carbon neutral by 2050, while China sets its own target to be carbon neutral by 2060. Therefore, business will have to become more sustainable. Quality will have come over more important than quantity. Market of future will be the market of ideas, where collaboration and cooperation are the key for exporter drivers. The 100% pure New Zealand campaign feeds into the clean, green image of niche premium products valued by discerning Chinese Generation Z, which are the consumers who are very concerned with the environmental issues. 
New Zealand and China have shown a great resilience in bilateral trade throughout the pandemic, and the chamber itself and the member are working toward uh, to support this. The chamber and its members, such as China Construction Bank, have organized numerous matchmaking events online to continue promoting cross-border trade and investment, even while the border was shut. We recently collaborated with a bilingual book, Doing Business in New Zealand, by working with the leading legal and accounting firms to serve as a most useful resource for a wide range of, of topics related to business environment. The section on, of the book on Maori economy, e economy gives a better understanding of the cultural nuances unique to Aotearoa. The book begins with a foreword by Honorable David Parker and ends with Honorable Stuart Nash financial glossary contribution. We strive to remain relevant to expand our relationship between China and New Zealand business as advocates for our members. Just uh, We have just completed an internal survey on that as well. Though the past year has been a challenge for many, 42% of the respondents saw their business grow. We hope to highlight that 53% of respondents are focused on environmental concerns that are contributed to climate change um, targets. 50 member stated specific initiatives, namely green energy, environmental friendly products to protect sustainable resources. There has been much discussion in the media about airlines rebuilding their reconnectivity, but China Southern, China Eastern Airlines and New Air New Zealand continue flies at a loss throughout the pandemic. We work hard to maintain airline links to, for passengers to retain homes and cargo flights for exporters. Since the outbreak, China Southern Airlines has operated 255 passenger flights and 268 passenger, passenger free cargo only flights that helped 25,000 people return home and ship nearly 10,000 10, uh, 10, tons of goods exported from New Zealand to China. Supply chain issues have also been a concern impacting New Zealand's importers, exporters, and consumers. To cope with the surging demand, Costco Shipping has cooperated with New Zealand Ministry of Transport, terminal, container yards, and freight forwarders um, in search of efficient solutions to expedite vessel movements and improve supply chain operation. One area that has been seen exponentially growth during the pandemic is e-commerce. Some of our members focusing this space are thriving, such as TradeMonster, partnering with Alibaba. TradeMonster platform has opened opportunity for New Zealand SME to access China market with direct shipping capability to the Chinese domestic market. There, these are just a few examples of our members tackling balancing act in their sectors while they work away, they walk away and work quietly to deal with the challenge brought on by the pandemic. There are many more that have evolved embracing by the embracing technology, but time here is very limited, which prevents me from expanding further. In closing, I would like to thank those that have supported us in our mission to expand bilateral relation, especially NZHE and government officials. You can see how we transitioned from importing made in China only products to expanding premium New Zealand products and focusing on environmental issues here at home. Chinese managed and owned business have integrated into this local market has become an important part of the New Zealand economy. We strive to we strive for Takati Hongna in our adopted home as guardians to protect the land. The topic here at the summit is balancing act. We believe we are doing our best to make this a win-win situation, and that is mutually mutually beneficial for both of us. We are at our side. Um, to harness the strengths of the growing Chinese economy. It has been a 20 brilliant years, and we look forward to the future with optimism, and thank you to you all.
Uh, thanks very much, Yunfeng, for that update, uh, and well, well done on stepping in at uh, short notice. And congratulations also to the, to the Chamber on a successful 20 years. Now, I know it was a very early start uh, today, and we've already covered a lot of ground, so I think it's a, a great time to break for morning tea. Uh, make sure you stop by the coffee cart if you haven't already, uh, courtesy of ANZ and also Fonterra for the milk uh, that's supplied. We'll see you back in here at 10.30 for a view from the top with our high-level business panel. Thank you.